From the east and the west, you've heard others, but now you've tuned into the best. This is a Prime Wave Media production, the NFL Bet Exchange, hosted by my man, Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper, and the Don of Cape Cod, Jeff Dawson. Welcome to the NFL Bet Exchange with your host, the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper. And Jeff Dawson, CEO, founder of East Coast Sports Investors, the Don of Cape Cod. All right. We are now rolling into week 15. But in week 14, um, I went seven and nine uh, with Pop's best bets. And Jeff went ahead and broke even uh, 500 mark with the eight and eight uh, record on his side uh, this week. Uh, our tiebreaker really came down to uh, last night with the Browns and the um Browns and the Ravens in a classic uh, Monday night football game. One of the best ones I've seen in a decade myself. And um, I think that, wow, what a season that we have had, even though we haven't had fans here, it's been some incredible games that we've been able to witness this year, especially in prime time. And it was great to see a game like that last night, especially the way that it ended as well too. That will live in the annals of sports uh, TV history for some time uh, running out the locker room and, you know, I know Jeff was over there pumping his fist and me on the other on the other end was like, oh, no, not now, not now, please not now. Yeah. So it is what it is. The irony of the Cleveland Browns. That's all I can say. All right. So, Jeff, we got a great this is a very important week for a lot of teams uh, moving forward this week. And what we got what we have here is a very good Thursday night football game between two division rivals, two teams that have moved within the last three years as well, too. You have the now Los Angeles Chargers. I call them the Bad Beat City Chargers. And then we have the Las Vegas Raiders. I like to call them the Tri-City Raiders, you know what I mean? Because they got three cities, L.A., Oakland, and Las Vegas now. So pretty much um, we have ourselves a really good one here. The We have a spread of what I can see here of minus three to the Raiders and over and under of 55. The Chargers are coming into this game three and five since the bye week. And they, after a one and four start this season, and then you have the, their own six against teams over 500 though this year, Jeff, that's, that's not really something that um, they can write home about. Then they're three and six versus the NFC this year. Owen three uh, versus the AFC West um, as of now as well too. Uh, because they've played everybody and they've pretty much lost to everybody as well. The Broncos, Chiefs, and Raiders all beat them. And then um, we have the one and five on the road as well, too. But two, three, two, three, and one against the spread here, though. So pretty much the Chargers, woeful on the road, but you know that they can always stay in the game. The Raiders, though, the Raiders have lost three out of four since their three three, three game winning streak. And also the Raiders are four and two versus teams below 500, five and four versus the AFC this year, three and one versus the AFC West, but four and oh against the spread in the division as well, too. And then they're two and four at home, three and three against the spread and one and one against the AFC West this year, but two and oh against the spread in division play at home as well, too. Raiders need it more than the Chargers do. I really do think the Chargers have probably won their final game of the season, which was last week. And I think that the Raiders do move ahead in this one and get their win that they desperately need. And it's going to be the minus 150 to the Raiders as of now. But this spread will jump up as we go as well too, Jeff. So there it is. But I'm taking the money line regardless of anything. So most likely we'll end up probably with a minus 170 money line. But we'll see how it goes. Your two cents, Jeff. I, I agree. Uh, we're looking at it right now. It opened at three. Uh, it has shot up to three and a half. Juice to the Raiders uh, minus the 115. Uh, the money line uh, opened at 175. We're actually seeing some 180s. Uh, with it juiced at three and a half minus the 115, you can't even buy the full point and get that. You know, what What good is two and a half minus 140? As you witnessed last night, there was a possibility that game was going to land on two uh, until the nonsense uh, late, late in that game. So I'm going to follow your lead as well here. Uh, we're going to just grab the money line now. Uh, team in desperation. The Raiders have not looked good lately. 
Uh, and the Chargers with a uh, late second field goal to beat the Falcons. Short week, uh, must win for Chucky and the crew. We'll follow your lead, Pops, and take Vegas and the money line as well. All right. So there it is. We move on to the Saturday games. And our first Saturday game that we have up is going to be a good one here. It's going to be the uh, Bills at the Broncos. And the Broncos coming in here as a plus four dog, over under of 50 as well, too. That's very understandable because you have a uh, Bills team that's nine and four um, in uh, over and unders. That means that that pretty much they went over nine out of their 13 games this season. And you have a Broncos team that's went over uh, six times out of their 13 games as well, too. So that's why we see it over 50 at mile high at this time of the year. And then you have a 10 and three Bills team going against a five and eight uh, Broncos team who is such a healthy skelter group. But the bill is looking really good since the bye week 11. They're three and zero after a seven and three start. They're two and one versus the AFC West this year as well too. Jeff two and one against the spread as well. And then they're five and zero versus teams under five hundred this year as well. And then they're four and two on the road, three and three against the spread. Broncos four and five since the bye week. Um, and five and four against the spread since that point as well, too. They've actually improved immensely since that point after uh, only winning one game, um, you know, to start the season off and everything like that. 3-0 and versus the AFC West. Surprise uh, against the AFC uh, East. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, surprise, surprise, Jeff. You know what I mean? And um, the, the reason being is because they've been an underdog in each game this season as well, too. Not one game has the Broncos been a favorite. So they've been an underdog, and he's been three big upsets as well, too. Miami, New England, and then you had um, the Jets. Well, the Jets wasn't a big upset, but the Jets were somewhat the favorite that day on that Thursday night football game. Then you got a 2-4 and four team straight up at home, 3-3 three and three against the spread, though. And then they're 1-7 against teams over 500, 3-5 three and five against the spread. Now, everything is saying that, no, don't take the Broncos here, but everything is telling me that this is going to be an over bet on the Bills. I'm going to take the Broncos with the plus four and add the hook to it as well. I think that they lose by a field goal or less if they do lose this game because this is a, a game that the Dolphins can afford to lose and the Broncos can't, simply. I know the Broncos aren't vying for a playoff spot, but I know that they're playing with a little bit of pride to, though at this point, and I know Locke wants to keep his job as well too, so he's going to be up to up to, up to to it in this one as well. So I'm taking the uh, – Broncos with the hook. So let's see how it shakes out. What you thinking, Jeff? Well, I got some good news for you. First of all, that third, uh, that other upset was uh, this past week. They were about four or five point dogs at Carolina. Right. Um, De uh, Denver, right? Denver played at Carolina, right? Yeah, Denver Last, played uh, at Carolina and they uh, got the upset, another one. So that yep. was good on it for them. That was that. Yeah. Uh, your, your four and a half line has already shot up to six and a half. The public is remembering what they saw last. I mean, the Bills, huge second half against uh, the Steelers. Uh, and now it's a short week, head to mile high. I'm going to follow your lead as well. I'm going to go right off of this number here. Uh, if you're going to take the four and a half, obviously I'll follow your lead at four and a half. By the time that these guys actually see this uh, live, uh, they're going to be able to buy the hook and get a full touchdown with the Broncos most likely. So uh, give us the Broncos and the points as well, Pops. And as I always say, when Vegas puts out this line, this is the correct line in my opinion. The rest of it is just <laughs> everybody getting to the Thanksgiving table a bit and, fit and stuffing themselves but not knowing the consequences afterwards. All right, so Panthers at Packers, uh, eight and a half point spread to the Packers as the favorite over under of 51 as well too. The Panthers are four and nine on the season, seven and six against the spread over and under seven and six as well uh, this season. One and seven after being three and two after three wins in a row. This has been a, another uh, duplicate of what happened last season this team had a three-game winning streak and then went on what a nine-game losing streak after that as well. <laughs> they pretty much just lost for the rest of the season now I'm not saying that they will but the writing's kind of on the wall and then you have the one and two versus the uh NFC uh North this season as well too but two and one against the spread two and four on the road this year but this is a good stat five and one against the spread though Jeff on the road this year. And then they had the one and five first teams over 500, but three and three against the spread. 
All right, so the uh, Panthers have some things working in their favor a little bit. Brian, what, but what do the Packers have to really play for? Lead the NFC playoff race, that's one thing that they can play for. Are the NFC North champs, so they don't have to worry about holding off the Bears, Vikings, and the Lions anymore. They're 5-1 and one at home, straight up 4-2 and two against the spread. 7-1 and one versus teams under 500 as well, too. And um, pretty much, I think this is another game where the Packers are going to just hopefully try not to get hurt. They're going to try to keep this team as healthy as possible going into the playoffs this year. And I think what happens here is that the Panthers get themselves another cover. This team is a good covering team. They're eight and five on uh, their uh, seven and six on the year. I'm going to have to go ahead and do it again, Jeff, plus eight and a five, eight, and a, eight and a half on the Panthers. It seems like they've been automatic when it's been over six and a half this season. And I'm going to do it again. Plus eight and a half Panthers. I got to agree with you. I mean, I know Green Bay right now holds the number one spot in the Saints to face uh, Patty Mahomes this week, too. So Saints are about a four point dog there. So there's a potential of them losing again. Uh, I, I do expect Green Bay to win. I like the Panthers and Teddy Bridgewater coming in here, uh, free spirited, kind of keeping it close. Uh, you know, can someone cover De uh, Devontae Adams, please? I mean, you know, he's going to him. I mean, the first drive every time Packers touchdown Devontae Adams. I mean, it's scripted. Just stop it. And I'm going to follow your lead. It opened. I'm showing it currently right now, nine juiced uh, minus 115 Panthers. So whether they get the eight and a half or nine, I like the Panthers in this spot. I think they keep it within a touchdown or less. So I'm going to ride with you with the Panthers as well. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We move forward. And now we are moving towards Sunday and we got ourselves divisional games as well, too. And, you know, we always start off in the AFC as well. So we got the Patriots at the Dolphins. Dolphins coming in as the slight favorite minus two and a half uh, from what I uh, broke out here at the Westgate yesterday. Then over under 43 and a half as well, too. Now, the first game of the season did go over, but they actually went under between these two teams. And the Patriots were the favorite in the opening game this season and absolutely romped in that game as well, too, winning 21 to 11. I know the score doesn't seem like they romped, but they dominated them that day. They could, the Dolphins couldn't do much of anything. Now, the Dolphins, since that point, they've been a much, much better team. But let's look into these uh, past first patch of two and one um in division play straight up one and two against the spread this year five and four against the afc against the spread and straight up this season as well four and four versus teams over 500 this year as well five and three against the spread so that is a good advantage for the pats to have coming into this game now you have this dolphins team who is uh now nine and four on the year and this team is 10 and three against the spread. This team is really, really good when it comes to, you know, going against the spread and everything like that this year, uh, 10 and three. But actually though, let me take that back They're nine and four because did, they didn't cover um, Sunday. Did they? No, yeah, they, they did cover Sunday. Hold on, let me take that back. They covered on the uh, late, late play because I was over there licking, yeah. licking my chops hoping that Kansas city would go ahead and lock it up defensively. Then um, I guess Jeff had called into hard rock stadium to his old buddy, Brian Flores and said that, you know what you guys need to kick a kick the field goal right now because Vegas is leaning on you right now. So pretty much there it is. Um, the ghost of Jimmy, the Greek made the call and there it is six and a half to the, uh, to the uh, Dolphin better. So they did improve to 10 and three. And um, this team is four and one as a favorite against the spread and straight up this year, two and two straight up in the division, three and one against the spread as well. Six and two versus teams under 500 this year. And yes, the Pats are under 500. Uh, yeah, it's true. And then five and two at home against the spread straight up. So to me, the Dolphins have everything on the writings on the wall. It's time. And the Patriots are a bloody mess right now. And they're the team. They're sitting there, bullets all in the body, laid out on the table. And here comes Miami with the kill shot. This is going to end the Pat season right here. I got the Dolphins winning this game, minus 130. Let's see how it checks out. And we all know the woes that the Pats deal with when they go to South Beach. There it is. Jeff, you got the floor. 
it, it, it's so comical because the Dolphins opened up minus three. They're getting 59% of the bets, 65% of the money, yet the lines dropped to two. Huge reverse line movement on the Patriots. Money line opened at 140, currently at 135. 56% of the bets, 87% of the money all on the Dolphins, yet reverse line movement on the bets. We don't need the plus two. You can take it if you want. Pats plus 125 money line. Book it. They went out right. I got right. the writings on the wall here. So Jeff is on the Pats. I'm on the Dolphins. Let's go. This is kind of weird because it's been me on the Pats lately and it's been him on the Dolphins lately. So, hey, face off. Let's get it. Love it. All right, so we are going to take a quick break, and when we get back, it's time to jump into to some more divisional games. This is the NFL Bet Exchange. Good News Only Racing Club, led by the legendary Doug O'Neill, the trainer of two Kentucky Derby winners and I'll have another in Nyquist. Also trained two-time Breeders' Cup champ Golden Sense, who are just a part of a long list of thoroughbred champions trained by Doug O'Neill. The Good News Only Racing Club has a young core of horses to look out for in Dennis's Celery, Irish Heat Wave, and Notre Dame, just to name a few. Win the day every day with the Good News Only Racing Club, a proud sponsor of the NFL Bet Exchange. The Vigit app, where social media meets sports betting. Get the latest line movements in all major sports. Track your daily bets, daily contests, the NFL over-under contest that pays out 10 k in cash prizes. This is a cutting-edge app that helps betting be easy. Sign up with the reference code POPDBIC and you will be able to watch my daily show, The Primetime Angles, as a resource to building that bankroll. Vigit is available in your Apple or Google Store on your iOS or Android. The social sports betting app, Vigit. Austin here, EastCoastSportsInvestors.com. Welcome to you to the website. You're this close. Why not finish the deal and join our team? We're offering two great back to the basics and VIP packages for the rest of 2020. Uh, you can come on board to our own very own app and bet work, we call it, uh, for as low as 99 cents a day, $29.99 a month, or for the rest of 2020 for just $90. And that's a savings of $30 in one free month. Or join our VIP membership, which gets you uh, direct emails and texts to your cell phone on a daily basis. Our breakdowns, our do's and don'ts, why we are releasing this game, and what to be expected for those games and the upcoming future. So come on board, click the link, or follow us at EC Sports Invest on the Twitter. Um, we will follow you back and answer any questions there. Or also send us an email at eastcoastsportsinvestors at gmail.com. Look forward to joining our team and seeing you soon at the Winner's Circle. Welcome back to the NFL Bet Exchange with the one and only Pop DBIC, the primetime capper, and the Don of Cape Cod himself, Jeff Dawson. And we are back. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into this next uh, divisional game, Jeff, that we have here. And I have... The Texans at the Colts and uh, another AFC South matchup. And we got a six and a half point uh, favorite in the Colts this week. And then a 51 and a half over and under here as well, two for the scoreboard. Texans four and nine on the year against the spread four and nine over and under six and seven. This has been a dreadful year. I know that Deshaun and the crew are just ready to wrap it up. JJ White as well, too. Um, three and three since the bye week, though. They're doing much better since that point because they were actually really bad um, before that. They were actually one and six um, going into their bye week as well, Jeff. So, you know, pretty much um, they, they, they've they they've caught some strides with Romeo here as the head coach a little bit. They've, they've won. 
with Romeo as the head coach. And um, pretty much you have a zero and eight record though against teams that are over 500, one and seven against the spread. This is, this is not the Houston that we're used to. You know what I mean? Houston is a team that was very overlooked for a long time that made the playoffs every year. You know what I mean? And we're, we're a good friend to you when you needed a big dog to maybe win on a Sunday against one of the better teams in the NFL. You know what I mean? Two and two this year against the division one and three against the spread two and five on the road, uh, straight up three and four against the spread. Then you got the Colts two and two in division play five and four against the AFC this year, four and five against the spread. Then you got four and two at home for the Colts this year, three and three against the spread five and one versus teams under 500, four and two against the spread in this game in, in that spot and two and oh at home as well too. So pretty much the Colts have everything working in their favor here. And as I said before, the Texans are just ready to wrap this thing up. I think the Colts actually have themselves a pretty good game here. I know that they haven't been, they split with both of the, uh, they, they've been, they split with the Titans and they already got a win over the uh, Texans. And so you would think that maybe it might be a split here as well too, but that's not going to happen. Six and a half to the Colts. They should win this game and they should be breeze and win this game as well too. But there it is, six and a half on the coach. Let's see how it shakes out. To all the fantasy players, T.Y. Hilton's got hot the last two weeks, and he usually has one big game against Texans every year. So if you got him in your lineups, make sure you play him. Uh, I'm seeing some flat sevens all across the board, Pops. 65% of the bets, about 47% of the money on India line furries there. Uh, same as the money line with 56% of the bets, 55% of the money all on the Colts. And that has stayed at minus 325. You can grab the Texans at plus 263. Uh, you know, the Colts have been a great team. Great story. Uh, nice w victory. Actually, great second half uh, last week in Vegas. I mean, they just, Vegas just pooped themselves in the second half. Uh Hoping a little ebb and flow here. Uh, I do think the Colts are going to win. If you could see some sevens out there, by the hook. Grab them at seven and a hook. Hopefully they lose by less than seven. Uh, you know, they got to win the turnover battle. David Johnson is active this week. I got that alert earlier today. Uh, the wide receiving core is banged up. We don't know if Cooks will be there. Uh, we know Fuller's out. So uh, going to take the uh, Texans plus the seven, seven and a half, and pray, Pops. Pray. Pray, and you've got to pray. All right, so we move on to the NFC now, Jeff. And in the NFC, we have ourselves another really, really fun matchup. It's going to be the Bears at the Vikings. Vikings are a six and a half point uh, favorite here, over under 46 as well. You have a Bears team that's six and seven on the season against the spread, six and seven, over under five and eight. Now, the Bears just ended their six game losing streak. Uh, last week in fanatic for in, in emphatic form with a 36 to seven win over the uh, Texans. I didn't like that at all because I had the Texans in that spot. And I thought the Texans were going to show up for me like they did pretty much all year against the uh, teams in the NFC, except for the Packers, but they didn't show up. So we move on and uh, we have the one and six though bears with teams over five uh, with teams over 500 this year, two and five against the spread as well. And then you have the one and three in division play, but one and one on the road in the spot as well, too. They did beat Detroit week one and then three and three on the road, but they've lost their last three on the road as well, too, Jeff. Then you got the Vikings, a team that's uh, been very good since the bye, five and two since that point after a one and five start to the season. Then you got five and two versus teams under 500, three and four against the spread as well, too. And then you have three and one. First, uh, three and one in division, two and one at home, though, in the division as well. And then they're three and four at home overall. And then they're two and five against the spread. So this team is a helter skelter. It's hard to trust them. What I'm going to do here is I would love to take them on the money line, but we're going to play a little bit of an insurance game this week. We're going to take the Bears plus six and a half. I trust you again. That was a great win that you had last week. And to all the Bears doubters and people that think they know the Bears better than the Bears know themselves, there was a reason why Mitchell Trubisky was the starter over Nick Foles. 
The guy knows how to help his team score points, regardless of what anybody thinks. Once Nagy loosens this thing up, they're able to score it. Look at how many points they've scored the last three weeks with uh, Trubisky as the quarterback. This is a whole totally new offense. So keep that in mind, betters. Keep that in mind, fantasy players as well, too. And David Montgomery, as I had to reference to Bears fans the other day, he's playing lights out. And he's your best. And I think he's probably your best asset other than Allen Robinson. It's funny. Bears fans don't even know who the best players on their teams are anymore. They Tyreek Cohen. Tyreek Cohen hasn't even been, been around this season. Come on, man. <laughs> Seriously. It's like being like Walter Payton. <laughs> Dexter Carter. What? What are you watching? You got the floor, Jeff. Well, I have a bad news for you, Pops. The uh, Minnesota is now minus three, minus 125, and the Bears are plus three. Oh, so we're so, in our mind now, huh? I'm going off Westgate, put this out. My head. You know. No, I, I know that. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. And uh, I was looking at Westgate right now. So I think people got your, 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 your osmosis, your tip early, and they ran to the Westgate windows, and they were bought, bought, bothering John Murray for more, 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 and more, and they've been pounding the Bears. They're not stopping. So uh, I was just giving you a little update. I'm not – listen, I'm not knocking anything. You know that here. Um, looking at what, what we were seeing here is an onslaught of all Bears, 45% of the bets, 88% of the money on the spread. Uh, money line, 57% of the bets – 97% of the money all on the Bears uh, opened at plus 151 on the reverse line movement on the Vikings money line. And if I tried to take the three, four, and tried to juice it down, it makes no sense. So we're going to take the Vikings money line minus the 176. And maybe we both win. Maybe we don't. But actually, you, we both can't win here. So we'll take the Vikings. You got the Bears in. We have another faceoff. There it is. There it is. I think that they just split. Trubisky's been good against the uh, Vikings in the past as well, too. He has a winning record against these guys as well. So, you know, that's one thing that um, needs to be known as well. I think that right now he is, what, 4-1 and one against them all time? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Because we got to always remember his rookie year, they went to the playoffs. Yeah, Bears fans. Yeah, how 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 fast you guys go away from the people that help you get to where you got to get to. But um, we move forward. We got the Bucks at the Falcons. This one would have been a great game if the Falcons didn't kind of fall apart here in the second half of the season. Well, they didn't fall apart. They actually got better. And now the they're smelling the roses and realizing exactly who they actually really are. A team that could have anything they want, but they just come up short. It's just that simple. You know what I mean? And there just needs to be a little bit more. Uh, two and two in the division right now are the Bucks. One and one on the road in this spot as well. Four and two on the road overall, straight up um, against the spread. They're three and three, though. Five and four against the NFC this year. Four and five against the spread, though, against the NFC. And then six and one versus teams under 500. But they're four and three against the spread in the spot as well, too. All right, so the Falcons come in here four and nine, five and eight against the spread, five and eight over and under, two and two in division play, one and three against the spread. Then um, they come in here two and four. Actually, they're one and three in the division. I'm so sorry. One and three in division because I have to remember they lost to the Panthers and they've been swept by the, um, they were also swept by the Saints as well too. So they're one and three overall. So sorry about that. And they're one and three against the spread as well. And then they're two and four at home, uh, straight up against the spread, um, straight up and against the spread as well. One and three since the bye week 10 as well, after having a pretty good run going three out of four before they went on the bye as well too, Jeff. So, you know, it's been, it's been bad for this team uh, all season. One and four versus teams under 500 this year. Um, so, you know, when you look at it, it's just, it just, don't look good, man. You feel what I'm saying? Like they just, it's just not looking good at all for this team. And really, I want to say it's saying under, but it's actually over 500. I'm sorry. So one in four versus teams over 500, and that's just not good. But I still think that what happens here is that they'll figure out a way to stick around in this game. 
but I still think that the Bucks will wind up winning it because I just think that right now, after losing last week, that there's not going to be much more that the Falcons can do for the rest of the season. And the Bucks are in a situation where they need to really win this game because this team is eight and five, but they got other teams nipping at the heels for that playoff spot. They're not, they're not a lock. Okay. And they need these wins to boost confidence into the second season as well, too. So this is a good way for them to get things back into order in a sense, in my opinion. So I'm taking the bucks with the five and a half here. I think everything's uh, right. is on the wall. They should win this game and win this game by seven or better. Jeff, what are you thinking? Uh, we had a line that opened at three and a half. It's currently at six, 58% of the bets, 98% of the money all on the bucks. Public remembers two things. What they saw last, what did they see? They saw a bucks win uh, against the Vikings who Dan Bailey missed four, extra, uh, four field goals, which t- if you get those four field goals, they win the game outright. And then obviously an Atlanta team that lost at the buzzer of the Chargers. Under over opened at 51 and a half, currently at 50 and a half. Uh, what we see here is initially Vegas seeing this game at around that old 28 24 game. So, with that being said, we'll grab the Falcons plus the six, six and a half. Hopefully, they keep it within seven. Uh, but I agree. I think the schedule is set up for Brady and company to, sh- to sheet and to run uh, the gamut. I think that would get them to 11 and five to end the season. Uh, obviously not going to win the division, but uh, we'll be a dangerous team uh, come playoff times, but we hope the Falcons keep it within a touchdown, Pops. All right. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. All right. So we move on and uh, we have ourselves our conference games here, Jeff, and we have ourselves a doozy here. This is going to be the Jags at the Ravens. Ravens are a 13 and a half point favorite coming in this one, 46 and a half over under. Now the Jaguars one and nine against the AFC but Pete, it's four and six against the spread, though, Jeff. Oh, and six on the road, three and three against the spread. One and six uh, against teams over 500, four and three against the spread. Oh, and six since by, oh, and six since by, uh, since their bye week, week eight. And you know, there's, you knew their story before this as well, too, Jeff. The team was already, uh, what, one and six at that point as well, too. So it's been a bad year all in all but when it comes to covering this team is six and seven and then when it comes to over-unders they're seven and six as well so you're going against the Ravens team eight and five coming off of their biggest win of the season seven and six against the spread for the Ravens six and seven over-under so the Ravens aren't a team you can really trust on the spread but they've been able to actually take care of their business in two games that worked out where they were a double digit favorite as well too so that's is where you kind of get get to being like okay i like it uh you got a raven team five and five against the afc though this year six and four against the spread though then you have a three and three at home and then you also have this team is five and oh against teams under 500 four and one against the spread three and four since by is they're three and four though since the buy though jeff um week seven after a four and three start so this team is actually four and four jeff so so sorry about that that win last night secured them to be four and four last night so pretty much there it is uh this team has been they've been going through it jeff but they're they're still here that's the whole thing they're still here and um it is what it is at the end of the day man um so i truly do think that this squad is gonna be able to um you know do what they got to do to bounce back like they did against Cleveland Sunday. And they're not going to mess around with the Jaguars. You can't because Jaguars will make it a real game. I think that the uh, Ravens win this game by two touchdowns or better. I agree. What we just talked about Brady and them running the gauntlet. I think the Ravens will run the gauntlet. They had the toughest test last night. Uh, even with Lamar checking out quote unquote cramps, but uh, we all know exactly what happened. But anyways, uh, I look for the Ravens to rush for probably over 300 yards easy. Uh, Henry would have had 300 uh, last week if it wasn't, uh, you know, if he played the fourth quarter. So Ravens, 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 if you're seeing a 14 by the hook, get it down to 13 and a half or a flat 13. Uh, I look for a romp here. Ravens in a romp, pups. Ravens in a romp. And actually, Jeff, it was three and four after a five and one start. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I had that correct for you guys for the um, 
with, for Baltimore because Baltimore is not playing the greatest of ball here in the second half, just to give you guys a heads up. But they've been able to handle the bad teams, though. So with that, we're going to be right back. This is the NFL Bet Exchange, and we will be right, right back. Good News Only Racing Club, led by the legendary Doug O'Neill, the trainer of two Kentucky Derby winners, and I'll have another in Nyquist. Also trained two-time Breeders' Cup champ Golden Sense, who are just a part of a long list of thoroughbred champions trained by Doug O'Neill. The Good News Only Racing Club has a young core of horses to look out for in Dennis's Celery, Irish Heatwave, and Notre Dame, just to name a few. Win the day every day with the Good News Only Racing Club, a proud sponsor of the NFL Bet Exchange. The Vigit app, where social media meets sports betting. Get the latest line movements in all major sports. Track your daily bets, daily contests, the NFL over-under contest that pays out 10 k in cash prizes. This is a cutting-edge app that helps betting be easy. Sign up with the reference code POPDBIC and you will be able to watch my daily show, The Primetime Angles, as a resource to building that bankroll. Vigit is available in your Apple or Google Store, in your iOS or Android. The social sports betting app, Vigit. Austin here, EastCoastSportsInvestors.com. Welcome to you to the website. You're this close. Why not finish the deal and join our team? We're offering two great back to the basics and VIP packages for the rest of 2020. Uh, you can come on board to our own very own app and bet work, we call it, uh, for as low as 99 cents a day, $29.99 a month, or for the rest of 2020 for just $90. And that's a savings of $30 in one free month. Or join our VIP membership, which gets you uh, direct emails and texts to your cell phone on a daily basis. Our breakdowns, our do's and don'ts, why we are releasing this game, and what to be expected for those games and the upcoming future. So come on board, click the link, or follow us at EC Sports Invest on the Twitter. Um, we will follow you back and answer any questions there. Or also send us an email at eastcoastsportsinvestors at gmail.com. Look forward to joining our team and seeing you soon at the Winner's Circle. Welcome back to the NFL Bet Exchange with your host, the one and only Pop DBIC, the primetime capper. And on the East Coast, my man, the Don of Cape Cod, Jeff Dawson himself. And uh, pretty much we jump into uh, these conference games, Jeff, and we have ourselves the Seahawks at the Washington football team. And boy, oh boy, the Washington football team has been something else. But let's talk about the Seahawks first. The Seahawks nine and four on the year, seven and six against the spread, over and under a six, uh, over and under six and six out of seven, six out of thirteen. So that's six and seven. I'm sorry. And then they're four and zero oh since week ten as well. And um, that's coming after. I'm sorry. They're four and four since uh, week six since their bye week. Uh, after a 5-0 and start, Jeff. So this team has been kind of going through it here in the second half of the season, but that's that comes with the territory. It really does, because once you once you wanted better teams, everybody tr- plays up to your skill level. Then you have 3-3 three and three on the road for the Seattle team as well. 6-1 and one versus teams under 500 this year, and 4-3 and three against the spread. And then you have also um, 7-2 and two against the NFC uh, this year, 4-5 and five against the spread um, this year as well, too. So, you know, and then you got this team that's um, actually 2-1 um, and one against the uh, NFC East this year. Only loss was to the Giants, 
Um, and that was a surprise, surprise, because the Giants were the biggest dog uh, that played them out the division this year as well, too. Then you got Washington coming in here as a five and a half point dog at home. And this is why Washington is going to be probably one of the sexier picks of the week for people that want to just get some value here. Um, four and zero oh since uh, week 10, Jeff, after a two and seven start, three and three at home. One and four, though, over uh, uh, versus teams over 500 this year. Four and five versus the NFC, but six and three against the spread this year. Since they're such a good spread team, Jeff, they're nine and four on the season against the spread, five, seven, and one when it comes to the over and under. I'm going to take them on the spread this week, plus five and a half, the WFT. And you know, this is hard for me to do because I love Seattle, but I think that they're going to keep this game very close. And I love watching this week, plus five and a half. And they got the lead in the East, and they're trying to keep that lead as, as, for as long as possible because once they lose, then the Giants jump right back into first place. So they got to win. There it is, plus five and a half. Uh, Washington, hopefully they go ahead and uh, cover that spread, though. That's what we really need them to do. Now, winning, that's one thing, but covering the spread, that's everything. Let's get it. You know, it, it, it's a tough spot because – this whole game is predicated. If Pete Carroll doesn't find a way to slow down Chase Young, this game is over. And he's just, I mean, what a game he had um, last weekend in the 49ers. Uh, this one opened at five, currently seeing some sixes. Uh, all Seattle, 60% of the bets, 90% of the money on the money line. Uh, Seattle opened at 235, currently 264. But 83% of the bets on Washington, yet 56% of the money coming in on Seattle there. They are now minus 264 on that money line. You can grab Washington at plus 217 if you think they could sneak out a win. We're just going to hope and pray that Seattle wins by a touchdown or more here. Um, look for DK and Lockett to have huge days. Again, they have to slow Chase Young down. How do you do that? You run right at him with Carson and hope uh, – the defense had a big game. I know it was the Jets, but I look for them to get back on track. And you'll see Pete Carroll and company in December have usually been lights out. So we're going to take them minus the five. Uh, we bought the hook uh, and look for uh, Russell and company to win by a touchdown or more pops. I heard that. I heard that. All right. So we move on to our next spot to our to the um, Eagle, to the uh, 49ers at the Cowboys, Jeff. I know you like this one, man. This is an old school 90s, uh, 80s uh, matchup, you know. Two of the most bitter fan bases and two of the biggest rival fan bases I've ever seen. Cowboys and 49ers is almost like you guys know you don't play in the same division, right? But their fans go at it like – the Hatfields and the McCoys, dude, I'm telling you. And um, 49ers coming in here, three-point favorite on the road, over under 45. Cowboys one and two since the bye. Four and six start to the season as well for the Cowboys. They're three and six versus the NFC straight up and against the spread. They're three and two versus teams under 500 this year. And they're four and two on the road and two and two versus the NFC in total. All right, you got the Cowboys coming in here, four and nine. Three and ten against the spread, dreadful, Jeff. Six and seven over and under as well this year. Two and two since the bye week, though. They're be they're playing much better football since the you know start of the year and everything like that. After starting off two and seven, and then you have the uh, three and six versus the NFC this year, but one and eight against the spread, Jeff. Then you got the three and three versus teams under five hundred, but one and five against the spread. And then once again, you got two and four at home, but one and five against the spread. Golly, Cowboys, it's just, man, it's nothing that works out well for you guys right now this season. And I think that I'm going to have to do this, Jeff. Since they want to show up and they did so well last week, I'm going to go ahead and end my, my Cowboy uh, I'm angry at you situation. I'm going to trust them more with one of my most trusty bets, Jeff, and you know what time it is. It's the good news only dog bet of the week. Give me the Cowboys at home against the 49ers, brother. I love it. Give it to me, plus 150. I think it's a strong bet. Andy Dalton's getting comfortable with the system now. 
Um, he has those weapons. Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, those guys didn't go anywhere. Gallup didn't go anywhere. Zeke Elliott didn't go anywhere. And uh, pretty much uh, they know who they are. They know they're not going to make the playoffs. So why not, Jeff? Give me the Cowboys plus 150, the good news only dog bet of the week. Let's go. And I know I'm going to dread doing this, but Cowboys, take care of your boy one time. And just to note, nine and five on the season when it comes to that bet as well, too. So don't play with me, okay? All right, dog bet. I am the dog whisperer. Nobody else has a dog better than week three, guys, because they'll give up by week three. But come to our show. You'll always get yourself a dog weekly. Go ahead, Jeff. Cowboys opened up minus one, currently plus three. 71% of the bets, 97% of the money on the Niners. Niners opened up minus 140, currently minus 165. Your Dallas, you can get, like you said, 140, 145, some 150s. 71% of the bets, but 66% of the money coming in on them Cowboys. Now, with that said, Pops, you hit some things about Dallas covering and Dallas at home. And you've talked on this show week after week after week how the 49ers are putrid at home, but get them on the road and boy, those ears are pinned back. And I have to have a face off here. I, 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 I do think that Dallas had a little pity party, the Dalton revenge game in Cincinnati, but you're going to get a, a, a Shanahan team that is fired up. They are mad. They are angry. I think they're going to be in Dalton's face all day. I think they run for 200 yards plus uh, against this Dallas defense. And as long as Mullins wins the turnover battle, they could bring back Steve Young of Montana at this point, I think, and just hand it off. And they're going to run, 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 and run. I'm going to go opposite here with you, Pops. We'll have a true face up. Give us the 49ers money line, and let's see who uh, who wins this game. I like it, brother. I like it. All right, so we move forward, and we have ourselves another great one here. Eagles at Cardinals, another NFC uh, conference game as well, too. And uh, this one should be really, really good because um, we got ourselves some um, teams that are going to different places. The Eagles still got an opportunity to win their division as well, too. Don't, let's not sleep on that fact. Now they got Jalen Hurts starting at quarterback as well, too. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of controversy is there. Cards coming in as a six-point favorite and also over and under 49 and a half for this game as well, too. You got an Eagles team, 4-8-1 and one on the season, 4-9 against the spread, 4-9 over and under. Uh, this team, 1-4 and four since the bye week, 2-3 and three against the spread, though, at this point. 4-5 and five versus the NFC this year. 1-5 and five on the road, 2-4 and four against the spread. 1-6 and six versus teams over uh, 500, 4-3 and three against the spread. So the Eagles have some things working in their favor when it comes to covering spreads. So pretty much um, the them being – uh, six point uh, dog is very warranted in the spot because this should be a alley -oop game for a team in the cards who have to win. They're in a must win situation, but the Eagles are in a must win situation. Cardinals two and four straight up, one and five against the spread since their bye week eight. And they, this is after a five and two start. This team has been one of the worst when it comes to the second half of the season. Then you have the five and four versus the NFC this year. Five and two against teams under uh, 500, four and three against the spread. And they're only three and three at home, Jeff, as well. I think that the Eagles come in here and they might not win the game, but Jalen Hurts and um, Mr. Murray are going to have a nice little uh, showdown between two speedy quarterbacks. And we're going to wind up having ourselves a hell of a game come Sunday. I'm taking the Eagles plus six. Let's see how it shakes out. Uh, line open to five and a half pops currently at six. It's all Eagles. 60% of the bets, 90% of the money on Philly, yet the line went from five and a half to six. Reverse line movement on Arizona. Money line. Arizona open minus 265, currently minus 275, yet 72% of the bets on Arizona, 94% of the money on the Eagles. A reverse line movement again on Arizona. Under over open to 47 and a hook, currently at 49 and a hook, all public money on the over. So the initial report us tells us that basically Vegas sees this as a 27-20 game to start. 
Now the line's gone up to nine and a half. We're going to ride uh, Desert Swarm. Played Defense played great last week in the Giants. And now we're looking them to come back home. Again, win the turnover battle. Get out early. Maybe a little uh, Chase Edmonds action. And then, you know, over the top, that secondary is banged up right now uh, for the Eagles. So look for Hopkins. Look for Kirk to have big days. We're going to take uh, Arizona minus five and a hook. We're buying the hook here. Hope that they win by six or more. All right. All right. And we're going to move on to our next game. Now we're getting into the interconference games. And um, I know I'm a, I'm going a little out of order, but I'm, I, I, I just put, put this one up here because this one jumped out to me a little bit quicker. And I just always forget how irrelevant the Titans and Lions are. But they'll be coming up in, on our uh, break after our break. So pretty much um, Jets on 13, Jeff. Woeful. Woeful. Dealing with the wolves. All right. And then you have the four and nine uh, against the spread over and under six and seven. This is a spread of 17 points to the Rams this week over and under 44 and a half. The Rams, though, they come into this one very good home record. Now, Jets, I'm just going to go ahead and let y'all know. Jets are on three versus the NFC West. Not, no surprise there. They're on 12. On four since the bye week, week 10, but two and two against the spread. 0-8 against teams over 500, but 2-6 and six against the spread. And then 0-6 on the road with 1-5 and five against the spread. You know where they covered at, Jeff, on the road? Just guess. No idea. Same place that where they're playing at Sunday against the Chargers. They covered that game, 38-24. to They were able to cover in that game. They were a nine-point dog that day. The Rams coming in here 1-2 and two versus the AFC East. Um, also, the Rams are four and one since the bye week after a five and three start. Hottest team in the uh, NFC probably right now as well too. And then you have the six and two versus teams under five hundred and five and three against the spread. Guess who those two losses were? Two straight up. The East. No, to the 49ers. Under five. Uh, that's right. Yes. And then Owens, oh, and then they're five and one at home, four and two against the spread. Now, who is the team that, other than the 49ers, who covered in New, in uh, L.A.? Giants. So this is going to go back to uh, – this is going to give me all the backing I need to go ahead and be crazy this week. Give me the Jets plus 17, Jeff. And if, if anyone has backed the Jets on this show more, it's me. Every week it's been an auto play, and this is the week we're bailing. We're buying the hook. Give us Rams minus 16 and a half. Now, technically, they should have this covered by midway point in the second quarter. Now, if they play grab ass, and next thing you know, you know, Donald, Flacco, Joe Namath, whatever, you know, is their score. And, well, you know, again, they, they could be due for a dud. They could be peekaboo into next week, but – there's no excuses here. You should wipe the field with this team. I in a chance, maybe the Saints lose again and get closer to a, you know, a, a, a two seed, you know, uh, with the Packers if they win. So the, the Saints lose, uh, you know, getting closer. I don't know. I just, there's no way in hell on paper that this should be within 28 points, Pops. But we'll take the uh, Rams minus the 16 and a half and pray. Pray, pray. All right, so me and Jeff, we're going to go down over here to the cathedral for a moment. We're going to let you guys enjoy these commercials. We'll be right back. This is the NFL Bet Exchange. Welcome to my bookie. You're ready to create an account and start making money, and we're here to help. And remember, you can get a bonus of up to one thousand dollars on your first deposit. Now you're ready to bet. Just go to mybookie.ag, visit the sports book, click on your bet, and input the amount you want to risk or win in the bet slip. Yes, it's that easy. Just remember. 
At my bookie, you play, you win, you get paid. Amazon, we're pretty good at getting things done. We're pretty good at solving problems. COVID-19 is the biggest challenge we've had to face. But challenges are what motivate us. Like flying masks to our employees around the world. We're doing everything we can to get you what you need and doing everything we can to keep our people safe. I'm former Navy pilot, Sarah Rhodes, and I'm proud to lead our Amazon Air Network. Welcome back to the final quarter of the NFL Bet Exchange. Boy, oh boy, Jeff, we're 16 episodes in. Can you believe we started off with a, I think it was a two and a half hour first episode of with talking about all the, um, all the divisions and everything like that. And we're now here at this moment as well too, Jeff. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. And um, as you can, as I can see, we got the Chiefs. Um, and we got some fun interconference games this week, like, some of them look like Super Bowl matchups, and some of them look like great um, Super Bowl matchups in a decade from now. And why don't we go ahead and talk about one that might be a dec- from a decade from now? This is going to be the Lions at the Titans. Titans a ten and a half point do- uh, favorite here, o- over under of fifty one points as well. Lions five and eight coming into the game against the spread five and eight as well too. Over under eight and five though. Uh, four and five since the uh, their bye week, which was week four after a one and three start. So Detroit has things to really go ahead and, you know, be proud about. You know, they didn't throw away that they didn't pretty much throw away the season. They've been a middling team since the start of the year. You know what I mean? And um, they're four and three on a row. That's really good straight up and against the spread. So that means the majority of their wins have came on the road. One home win this year. I know that upsets the Detroit fans, but you know what? You got to get your wins where you get your wins at. And then you have the one and two versus the AFC South this year. Now that's a little peculiar right here because they blew away Jacksonville, but they had some issues with Indianapolis and uh, with Houston as well, too, on Thanksgiving. And then this team is one and four versus teams over 500 as well, too. Um, at this point. So, um, you know, you look at the Lions, you say to yourself, well, they probably won't, don't stand a chance in this one. And if Stafford doesn't go, that's more than likely they don't really stand a chance in this one. I don't really want to take, and you know what? This one is really tough to choose because we don't know exactly where Stafford's going to be at come Sunday, but I think he's going to probably try to tough this one out because he has incentives to make and everything like that. So I'm going to take the double digit spread, but let me break down the Titans real quick. Why I'm taking the double digit spread. They're four and four since their bye week as well, Jeff, after a five and zero start, this team is just middling at this point. They're playing good. They still got everything in place, but they can be beat. And then they're four and three at home, three and four against the spread, Jeff. That's what scares me with them. And then they're 2-0 and versus the NFC North. That is something that works out in their favor. But they get the big matchup next week against Green Bay. And this week, it's six, they're 6-1 and one against teams under 500, 5-2 against the spread. But I still think the Lions will figure out a way to take my money if I don't take them. So I'm just going to take them this week to go ahead and say that they can cover, lose this game by a touchdown or less. Jeff, you got the stage. Well, it, I think Vegas is setting that number so high. I think with the understanding probably that Stafford isn't going to play, I mean, that number is really high. I mean, I think if Stafford was already penciled in, I think you'd be looking at a seven or eight number. So uh, not sure. Uh, I think Vegas is leaning towards Stafford not playing so they don't get the onslaught, uh, uh, you know, with a seven or eight line and then have to, you know, move that to a 10 or 11 number. Uh, last last week, Tennessee got their game back. Uh, it was Jacksonville. 
Henry rushed for 200 yards. It would have been 300 probably if he played the fourth quarter. Uh, look for the same thing this week. Look for A.J. Brown. Look for Corey Davis, Jonu Smith, and look for the defense uh, maybe even to punch one in. Uh, I think Titans, again, a lot of teams that had that big week last week look to follow it up as we're getting closer to the end of the season and that big playoff push. Titans need to keep it rolling. We look for them to keep it rolling. Titans minus 10. Uh, look for a big win for them from us. At least that's what we see right now. All right. There it is. Titans. Uh, Jeff got him with the big win. I'm over here trusting the Lions again. I don't know why, but I'm going to trust them. And, you know, as we always say, get down on them two knees and go pray. I'm telling you, Church of Degenerates, man. I'm telling you right now. Um, and I, I, I came, I, I gave my grace to him. So, it is what it is at the end of the day, Jeff. It is what it is, brother. So pretty much I'm looking at this right now. We got a Chiefs team that's actually six and seven when it comes to the spread and also six and seven when it comes to the over-under for a team that's actually 12 and one on the year, Jeff. Now they're going to be the favorite here. Um, three plus, I got them at plus three, 51 and a half as well too. And I think this Chiefs team, there is really no flaws in what's going on with this squad at all. I'm looking at every. I'm looking at my notes right now. When you look at their schedule, they're four and zero since the uh, bye week, which was week ten, and they've actually went ahead and. Um, but you know what? They've been having a real issue though covering Jeff. They actually have only they did I, they haven't um, covered any of these games. They're on four in their last four games that they played, but they're on an eight game winning streak as well too since their five, last loss. Um, their games have went actually three out of four of them have went over as well too. So that's something to look at as well. And then when you look at the, who they're playing, they're playing against a team with the winning record. So they have done well against teams with winning records this year, pretty much only losing one game in that category this season as well. Uh, so, you know, the, the, they have everything that it takes to be the team, you know what I mean? To win the Super Bowl again, all that good stuff. Then you have this, this squad in the Saints that's just coming off of a great seven-game stretch where they uh, – seven-game stretch after the bye, but they had two wins before that as well too. So their nine-game winning streak just ended against a Philadelphia team that was primed, ready to roll, and uh, they couldn't wait to play this team man, from what I saw. So pretty much um, you have that there too as well. So um, – you got a team that's going to be, you know what? And the Saints really haven't played against winning teams this year. They're only two and two against teams up under uh, teams over 500 this year, Jeff. And two of those games were against the Buccaneers. So pretty much uh, the only two teams over 500 that they've played this season are Green Bay and Vegas. That's it. When you look at the schedule, if you look at the schedule, that's who they've played that are, are over 500. But when it comes to this conference, right, this division right here, they are two and one. Only loss was to the Raiders early in the year. And um, pretty much when you look at this game, you say to yourself, this should be the game that the Saints should come out and do exactly what they've been doing to uh, a lot of these teams as of late. And that's play superior defense, Jeff. A lot of people have not said that about the uh, Saints this season, but those boys are playing some really bona fide, good, good, downright defense. And I like it. I like it a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Saints this week on the money line as well, too. I know I'm going to get the plus 160, plus 170, and we're going to rock and roll from there. It's okay. I trust Taysom Hill to really confuse and make the uh, Chiefs go ahead and, um, you know, really work for their money come Sunday. And the way Mahomes looked against uh, Miami, I didn't like it. And I know that the Saints have a better defense than uh, Miami. And I know that the Saints will hit you, and they will hit you hard. So give me the Saints. Plus 160, let's see how it shakes out. This is a, a huge system play for us at ECSI. I mean, this numbers are just falling off the charts here. And last week, Mahomes did something that he hadn't done in, I think, his whole career. And that was uh, he threw three picks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if you look at the numbers, Kansas City opened at three and a half, now three minus 119 on the juice. 70% of the bets, 88% of the money all on the Chiefs, yet the line went from three and a half to three. Strong reverse line movement on the Saints. 
money line chiefs opened up minus 200 now minus 170 that's with 56 percent of the bets 76 percent of the money all on the chiefs again huge reverse line movement on the saints here opened at plus 170 currently plus 148 150 uh so what we see here clearly is the Saints plus three and a half, Saints plus 150 on the money line. Uh, again, I think you caught the Saints peekabooing walking into um, Philly with Jalen Hurts and looking ahead to this game. So we're all on board with you here, Pops. Give us the Saints plus the three and the hook. Give us the Saints plus the 150 on the money line, and let's go Saints. Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? All right, so we move on and we have uh, uh, this one is going to be a lot of fun because this one, nobody expected this game to be the game that they shift to the Sunday night football platform. But when this team is at nine and four, you got to do it. The Cleveland Browns have became the story of the NFL as of late. And pretty much everybody wants to get a piece now, Jeff. Everybody wants to see what the hype is all about. And the Giants have taken back the hearts of all hardcore New York New Yorkers who were dealing with this pandemic. And, you know, the pandemic was just beating them down. Yankees uh, failed in the playoffs. Mets didn't even show up to the playoffs this year. The Rangers didn't look good. The Islanders failed you as well, too. And here come the lowly Giants with a one and seven start. Go ahead and get themselves a four game winning streak going. And uh, boom, here we are top of the uh the nfc uh east but now that is that that little fun ride has been throttled a little bit with that big loss last week to uh the cardinals in um a game where they it was a make or break situation for them to win and then you have the browns who could afford to lose actually on monday night football last night even though they didn't want to lose and if you would have saw the faces on that team you'd have thought they were the team that would was out of playoff contention it's like bro you got the two new york teams coming up next so pretty much the browns are coming into this one and they are have performed very well against the uh nfc east this season at this point they are three and zero against that division right now that has helped their record this year as well too as i said before they swept the afc south as well too so Pretty much, they got nine wins on the season. Seven of those wins have came outside of the uh, outside of the division, with two of them coming against the Bengals. So, pretty much, this team is beating everybody that the Steelers are beating. So, so that's why you can't say they have an easy schedule because, boom, they just actually just finally showing up. The Giants have a, no. This is a big moment for them. They did not expect to be on Sunday Night Football this year without the Cowboys accompanying them or the Eagles accompanying them. But you're going to have your dance partner is going to be the Cleveland Browns for this one. If this was 1962, this would be an ultimate, ultimate game coming up, you know, because Giants and Browns used to be a big game. Sammy Huff versus Jim Brown, blah, 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 blah. But let me go ahead in my rant. I'm going to be really, 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 really obvious here. Browns, go ahead and book that, baby. They're going to win this game, and they're going to win this one big because if you saw their faces after that game, Jeff, they can't wait to get on the field and rip somebody apart, and that's going to be the Giants come Sunday. So that's where I'm taking it, Jeff. That's where I'm going with this one. I'm going to go ahead and take the Browns, and I'm going to take the Browns on the um, – what's the number? I'm going to take the Browns on the three and a half, okay, Jeff? I'll take them on the three and a half and I'll take them on the money line, but I think I'm all right with the three and a half though, bro. To be that honest with you. You know, a week ago, the hottest ticket was the giants. This is a team that was leading the AF, uh, the NFC East. This was a team that was going to shock the world and win the East and, uh, Desert Swarm came in and they just shut them right down. And then Washington stuns the Niners. Now what's going to happen this Sunday here, Pops? This was supposed to be OBJ's revenge game. And unfortunately, he will only be in the stands probably selling popcorn and uh, no field goal nets to kick. And then they're going to already have the the uh, the uh, Washington team would have already played. So let's say Seattle holds serve and beats Washington the Giants are playing again for first place. And 
I like the spot they're in. I think you get a bounce back. I think you get a team that says we're on prime time. We're going to shock the world here. We're going to get back in the first place here. So not only is ECSI going to take the four, we're going to take them on the money line themselves, plus the 150. Uh, I think the Giants shock the world, and I think Baker Mayfield and company uh, lose two in a row here. So give us the Giants plus the four and give us plus the 150 as well, Pops. All right. So Jeff is on the Giants. I'm on the Browns. I can't wait. It's going to be an excellent, excellent, fun, fun game. The Browns deserve it more, man. Get this 10th win of the season. You're 10 and 4. You pretty much have solidified yourself into the playoffs. The Browns' magic number is 10 to me to get into the playoffs. There's no team except for the Ravens that can really bother what they're doing with their situation. They're not playing. They haven't played the Dolphins this year. And they've already beat the uh, the Colts. So they're sitting pretty still. Regardless of what anybody thinks, they're still sitting pretty. They're fine. All right, so let's move on to Monday Night Football. Are we ready for some Monday Night Football? Not really, because this game is not going to be one of those games where we're, you, you write home about 40.5 points spread, 12.5 uh, to the um, Steelers is the favorite as well, too. I think, once again, you know, I love this Bengals team on the covers and everything like that uh, in the first half of the season. But once we lost Joe Burrow, that has pretty much went out the window since that point, um, in my opinion. Even though they they showed up somewhat a little bit last week, I still think what happens in this game, though, is that the same thing that's been happening. Every time they've been a double digit against a dominant team, uh, in the division, they haven't been able to show up. They were already a double digit against the uh, Steelers earlier this year, and they were double digit if, uh, against the Ravens already too. So I think we're going to go for the trifecta here. I'm going to take the Steelers with the 12 and a half to win this game by 14 or more points because they really want to get this one off because they've been getting whooped the last two weeks. So this one right here, I feel bad for Cincinnati, but you guys are going to be a victim come Monday night. You know, the people had tried to talk about the Patriots last year, 8-0, and and then uh, finishing the season, I think it was 4-5. and five. They just melted down the stretch. Now, you got a Steelers team that came in undefeated two weeks ago. Now I've lost two in a row. This is the perfect spot. This is where they got to stop the bleeding. they got to try to get Connor going. Uh, they got, you know, Ben can't be throwing the ball 50 times a game. Uh, you know, the, the game was lost Monday night when – Tomlin decided seven to three right before the half wasn't good enough. And then they tried to score late in the second half uh, in the right before half and they get the pick six. So now they go down 10 to seven and the rest was history. I look for them early and often get Connor established, get out early, look for the defense. Anyone that has the Pittsburgh defense on their fantasy, uh, fantasy team, plug them in. They're going to score at least once. I'm with you pops. Steelers minus 12 and a half. I got them 17, 20, 24 point winners. All right. And there it is. And there it is for today's show as well, too. I'll have Sunday's lineup for you guys on the primetime angles on the IG on the DBIC wave underscore. And you guys can go ahead and follow me on the uh, Twitter at pop DBIC and also fo follow the uh, show page, which is prime wave media group as well. And um, that's where you guys can find me there. Jeff, where can they find you? Uh, on the Twitter, as you would say at EC sports invest, over on IG and Facebook at Jeff Dawson at East Coast Sports Investors. Uh, follow us. We'll follow you back. We'll answer any questions through direct message if you'd like. Uh, any emails at East Coast Sports Investors at gmail.com. Uh, check out our website at www.eastcoastsportsinvestors.com. Uh, you know, again, we're here uh, week 15. This season has just blazed right through, but it's been an honor and a blessing, Pops. Uh, Enjoy each week, and we'll hope uh, 2021 will figure something out as well. All right, and there it is for this week's edition of the NFL Bet Exchange, and I'm your host, Pop DBIC, also known as the Primetime Capper, and I am gone. Toodles! Thank you for tuning in to the NFL Bet Exchange, where the sharpest bets are laid. This show was produced by the Prime Wave Media Group.